Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert Dr. Amy Vazadin. And you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor. Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show. I am so excited to have Dr. Angie Beltzos on today's show. Hi, Angie. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Me too. The title of today's show is New Technology in Egg and Embryo Freezing with Dr. Angie Beltzos. And you can imagine if there's something that's new in the field of IVF medicine, she's going to have researched it. She's going to know everything about it. And if it's something that's worth our time, she's going to be talking about it. She'll be on the news about it. And I'm so excited that she's here bringing us more information about it. So thank you again. So excited to kind of dive deep into some of the new technologies that are coming our way. So I want to start by sharing with everyone your bio, because everyone just needs to know how amazing you are. You're M, you're, you're not just a medical doctor, but um, you're also a mom and CEO and chief medical officer of Vios Fertility Institute, board certified in OBGYN and in reproductive endocrinology and infertility. You completed your residency in OBGYN at Loyola University, followed by a fellowship in reproductive endocrinology and infertility at Washington University in St. Louis, Missouri, and then also the clinical research division director of Vios, and you participate in a number of research projects and scientific publications. As the REI Division Education Director for OBGYN Residency Programs of Illinois Masonic Medical Center, Lutheran General Hospital, and you guys, and St. Joseph's Hospital Chicago, Dr. Beltzos helps educate future OBGYN doctors. Amazing. She's a clinical assistant professor for the Department of OBGYN at University of Illinois at Chicago. Wow. Angie, welcome. Thanks for having me again. I'm, um, I think this is so awesome that you have these podcasts and educating the world. Yeah, and our audience loves to have a front row seat to learn about the latest technology in reproductive medicine. Before we get to what you're doing at Vios, tell us about yourself. I am originally from Michigan, uh, born and raised there and came to Chicago after I finished my training. Um, I spend a lot of time, as we all do with our work, and very excited to help my patients. And when I'm not doing that, I have four children. Uh, they all play hockey. So... Uh, always running to one rink or another, which uh, be as they are growing and moving to um, to go to school outside of Chicago. We're uh, now just with the little one and the second to little one. Um, I love to cook and uh, try new recipes and also work out whenever I can. And I love following on Instagram and I see you working out and it's inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> what drew you to fertility as a medical specialty? As a OBGYN doctor, um, we do have the privilege, I think, of being there um, when a baby is born and delivering babies was really um, quite a cool experience. And when I was a medical student, I walked by this door and it said IVF lab. And I was like, oh my gosh, could you imagine being there when um, that egg and sperm come together for the first time? And so I think being able to help build families and also use um, medicine and um, deep thinking along with advanced reproductive technologies makes this field, I think, unique and really fun as one of the providers of care. I agree. And what do you find the most rewarding with your job? The most rewarding thing, uh, and there are many, is that positive pregnancy test and that leads to a baby and it's so awesome. And you and I both know those moments where someone's really been in this marathon and up and down with the process and close to giving up. And I think when they're close to that one yard line and you can cross um, that line to, to touch down and, you know, you create a child, but you also create a grandchild and a sibling and a neighbor. And it's just the, all the lives that are touched by this, by the, the families we create, I think is very humbling. 
Yeah, and it's clearly not just a job for either one of us. So I shouldn't have used job. It's really our life's passion and work. Our heart beats for our patients each and every day. Um, you're based out of Chicago, and in February of 2021, and I saw all the news headlines, and I just love seeing all your, you know, everything, you know, about what you're promoting and talking about. So thank you for being here to do that as well. That you on you announced that you're the first fertility clinic to be offering Tomorrow Life Sciences in your practice. Can you tell us what Tomorrow does? Tomorrow is a uh, cryo robot, and it's also considered a platform in. Short though, it's where we store the eggs and embryos. So traditionally we keep them in what's called a doer. And it's like a little freezer that keeps these cells very, very safe. Uh, today though, um, we've been asking ourselves, how do we do this better? We're doing a good job, but how can we be even better? And so the Tomorrow Cryo Robot changes, I think, the standard of care for keeping these um, cells frozen. And how does it do that? How does it exactly work? Almost like one of those vending machines where you put in uh, your request uh, for maybe uh, a soda or something. Here you put plug in a patient's information and this robotic arm will move into the tank and pick up a beacon. The beacon is actually has an RFID code. So RFID codes are um, all over the world. Uh, we use them a lot. So for example, you might have an RFID code on your car when you go through the toll booth. Uh, they're also on uh, expensive clothes where you, you know, they remove that little RFID code before you uh, can take it home. This beacon um, allows for us to track the safety of the egg or the embryo that's stored in this little straw. So you can continuously monitor, monitor that particular beacon 24 seven, its temperature, its position. Uh, there are 17,000 data points that kind of are constantly emitted from this to recognize patterns and, and know that everything is safe uh, constantly and, and monitored. Wow, and how is that different from what you were doing before? What we do in IVF clinics all over the world is we've been able to monitor our tanks using um, outside monitors, sometimes some things inside. Uh, there are liquids that help keep things cold. Um, and we pour liquid nitrogen, which is uh, what keeps it cold, into a tank. Um, but there's a lot of manual labor that goes into that. Uh, this allows automation, technology, to monitor these things that we were writing with hand labels and um, watching things with devices that are really good and they've kept things very safe, but this is even better. And do you think that you know, with this technology, more and more people, I mean, a lot of people are doing IVF, egg freezing and embryo freezing. Do you predict that maybe more people will do it now hearing about this technology? Because I think a lot of people have that fear that maybe a tank is going to fail or things aren't going to be tracked um, very well for them to be comfortable with doing fertility treatment. So I think, um, Amy, there, there are a lot of questions that you just brought up. Number one is making sure that where your cells are, your egg and, or embryo, that they're safe uh, in the clinic that you have them in. And this will transform the standard in which we as scientists and medical doctors manage our tanks because it'll give us a lot more information on a moment to moment change. And so it will be, uh, I think, as this rolls out will really be so helpful. And the number one thing here is safety because we don't want anything to fall off our radar where a tank could warm and lose that tissue as it did in some of the tragic situations in the last few years. Um, but I, I think that uh, the way that we have to in, you know, involve you and me uh, in this is to um, use scientists, use technology and artificial intelligence uh, in a way that is unique. So I think what we'll find, and it, I was saying, it reminds me, you know, we, we got a new car and all the bells and whistles and ca cameras that turn on and off and lights. So that type of proactive management to avoid problems um, is, 
is sort of the mindset of tomorrow life sciences. Yeah, I mean, I just think of this is revolutionary. I mean, those are the kinds of words that I'm thinking of as you're describing the technology and how it can help people and to monitor their eggs and embryos and sperm, the, their most precious, um, um, the, the most precious cells to, to us. Most precious cells. The most precious. So, I mean, what you're saying sounds really awesome. I mean, as a doctor and then as a patient, and I wonder, is there some sort of, I bet there is, and you're gonna tell us about it, a monitoring system for the patient to actually see what's going on with their eggs, embryos, or sperm. So due to all these, um, al- these detecting systems that reside within the tank, um, what you have is constant uh, data that's coming through. And so as the uh, doctor or the scientist, we monitor all of that. And what will be coming is an app for the patient as well. So on your phone, just like you can monitor who's at your front door if the doorbell rings or if you turn on your location, you know, that type of monitoring will be available so you'll know that your beacon is safe. And what have your patients thought of this new service? I think that, um, you know, people take this for granted, you know, that, uh, you know, even our friends or or colleagues, they're like, well, of course it's safe. And by the way, where are these cells? Where do you keep them? Are they in your office? You know, I I think people don't realize that the cryo repository world where where cells are kept, um, whether it be our embryos from our patients and even cells from uh, the government you know, tracks uh, cells for cancer cells and research. All of these cells um, are very, very important. Bone marrow, uh, these these are kept in similar tanks. And so I think what we're gonna see is really uh, disruptive. Think about a taxi and an Uber or Lyft. It has become really changes the complete interaction of being moved from one location to another. Similarly, this now will change how we keep ourselves uh, stored and making sure, importantly, that the supervision of that information is, is incredible. Yeah, I agree. It sounds incredible. So what else are you guys working on at BIOS? Well, that this is obviously a really big project. Um, at Vios, we were the first ones to go live with the Tomorrow Tank. And it's been something that will be rolled out not only in the United States, but around the world. And being a pioneer in that endeavor has been, um, as one would expect, a, a learning curve for the Tomorrow team for the embryologist. And we continue to refine this incredible tool that I think uh, will be very important. You also brought up something really interesting, Amy, which is vitrification. And you know, a lot of people don't realize that the latest technology in being able to freeze something and let it come out and thaw and be as good as it was as a fresh cell. That's um, really transformed, I think, what services we've been able to offer our patients. And we think about, you know, in the next century, over 300 million people will be born from IVF. That's like the whole United States. <laughs> you know, that's a lot, a lot of people, a lot of children from this technology. Yeah. And then tell us about your clinics. I know you guys are expanding and in all sorts, you know, in different states like in Michigan. So tell us about all your satellites. So if someone wants to be seen at a BIOS clinic, they can go there. Well, th- that uh, is one of those things that you and I have been working on on our career is just to be able to help um, patients, not only um, the people that are in our own community or neighborhood, but I I think with social media and being able to uh, expand, it's been really great to be in different parts of the Midwest and in the country. So our current locations include Chicago, St. Louis, Milwaukee, Um, The Pacific Northwest will be opened in May and uh, Michigan will start in the summer. So I think those are really great opportunities to really, I think, reach people that um, are really needing 
uh, maybe a, another set of eyes or a unique way of approaching all of this. And, you know, you had asked too about innovation, like what else is out there? I think something else that popped in my mind is the Violet camera. Uh, this is a device that takes a picture of an egg. And as the egg whisperer, um, you, I know, are obsessed with this uh, concept of just egg health and how do we help make that ingredient uh, as strong and as healthy as possible, and then understand it. So the Violet camera, which is Future Fertility, is uh, the, the company out of Canada, and Dan Nayat's brainchild uh, takes a picture of an egg, and it can tell you how likely is that egg to result in a good embryo that could make a beautiful baby. And it uses also artificial intelligence and technology to create an algorithm uh, and uh, it's pretty cool. So I think what what you and I uh, and many others feel very passionate about is that we can't practice medicine like it's 1990 or 2000. We must stand on the shoulders of giants and it can be, um, you know, scary and, and those are things where you're trying new things, but we have to continue to move that mark forward. Yeah, I love, I love you. I love everything that you're doing. And, um, and I imagine that uh, as, as a woman, it hasn't always been easy in, a, in quite a male dominated world. And you would never know looking at you that uh, you had any challenges. So I applaud you for just being so fierce and being a revolutionary. You are so kind, really. Um, it's it's uh, the, the master is the one I'm talking to is Amy and you do it uh, beautifully. And I think, you know, we, we were talking um, with one of my friends today, just that, you know, some of this has to be intentional and we, love working with uh, amazing women and fantastic men. And really it's about the person, but also being thoughtful that we do give opportunity to those that sometimes, you know, you kind of overlook. Uh, and we were just saying that, you know, as the, I run the Midwest Reproductive Symposium, International and it's a it's a fertility meeting that's held in Chicago, but it has a global audience, and you know just being thoughtful to include young, vibrant um, women that are coming into the field and men, and not just include people that speak at every program, but that same concept of uh, you know the the opportunities we got to uh, and people that took a chance on us and you know putting that hand down and helping someone. So giving forward, I think is really important. I agree. And you're certainly doing that with all the training programs that you're a part of, all the educating you're doing. Um, so thank you. Well, thank you for being on the show, Angie. I really appreciate it. Is there anything else you want to add? Well, I think the, the one thing is that um, when you're trying to get pregnant, if you stumble upon things, listen to some of the things that Dr. Amy is, is doing. And that is, don't stop. Like once you have one obstacle, you can think outside the box. If the, the regular things don't work, uh, which we call evidence-based medicine, then we have to think about tier two and three and four and innovation. And by definition, innovation means there's not all the evidence yet because it's new. And we have to be thoughtful and safe and transparent, but also continue to push the envelope because this is your time to get pregnant. This is your time to freeze your eggs. And so I think we have to be... Um, your cheerleader and, and encourage you to not give up, but also to be um, really thoughtful because it takes medicine and science. And then of course that miracle of life. So thank you for having me. Super excited that I got this like chance to be with you. It's like with a superstar. Thanks Angie. I feel the exact same way about you. Thank you. Well, have a great day, everybody. Thank you. you too, Angie. Thank you for everything.
Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert Dr. Amy Vazadeh, and you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor. 